Uh, hey, what's going on guys? Um, it's been a while and um, today I wanted to try out the classic Daniel Lord um, hiding in my room um, bathroom camera angle and uh, also talk about the circumstances which have led to me being neat and um, I guess by circumstances I'm gonna talk about really kind of like broad general stuff and not like specific events like maybe the one event that led me to being neat which is a pretty massive story in itself that I'll get to eventually but I just want to talk about more um like I don't know general stuff like bullying and um you know stuff like that and anyways yeah that gets me to my first point which is bullying um yeah um yeah, bullying is one of those things that basically makes you highly afraid of interacting with other people. It makes you unable to, um, I guess, form intimate bonds because you're just so traumatized by what happened that, well, you um, are pretty much, um, I don't know, incapable of not seeing any everybody else as a threat. And, well, every time you um hear i don't know maybe someone laughing or giggling you just automatically assume that it's you that they're laughing at and that um well they're talking shit about you and um i don't know just being assholes and yeah that's i don't know i guess i'm lucky in the sense that i i didn't get the crap kicked out of me as far as like bullying goes but i feel like I like at most I got shoved a couple of times and it hurt my foot or the guy my main bully punched me in the arm but and bruised it but that's pretty much it um for the most part it was really more a lot of like I don't know like social stuff like constant name calling being called a faggot and stuff like that and pick, being picked on made fun of in front like at, in my face and um behind my back and when it was in my face there are several reasons why i didn't know how to stand up for myself and one of them was my asperger's and just not understanding the concept of self-respect and integrity and you know i don't know what else is there you know just like i don't know like not taking shit from people and respecting like loving yourself and stuff like that and yeah, I didn't really have any of that, I guess, because nobody maybe taught me or because of my Asperger's. And also, it just made it really hard for me to come up with witty remarks because I'm the type of person who, when I open my mouth, I usually say some really weird shit, especially when I'm nervous and everybody just looks at each other and is like, well, what the fuck did, just, did this guy just say? Like, that makes no sense. But then they don't say it out loud. But they just kind of look at each other and I guess eventually start laughing because I'm fucking weird and yeah there's that and also yeah um it really just messes with your head and throughout my life especially like high school middle school high school I have had multiple people bullying bully me well it's actually three I consider to be the main ones and um well they mostly just constantly try to like i guess test me and when they found out that i didn't know how to stand up for myself because of my asperger's uh well they started to do more and more shit say more and more mean things and make fun of me in front of other people knowing that i wouldn't know how to respond and that really traumatized me because it made me feel really isolated and alone and not know how to um i don't know just deal with people because I just saw them as threats and I got paranoid pretty much was the cause of my social anxiety so yeah that's definitely a pretty big circumstance and um, I will get into that in more detail probably about each individual bully uh, yeah I'll probably use like a mini series or something um, second thing that I want to talk about is um, well would probably be the fact that I never really had a like a significant um I don't know like 
male role model in my life and that's not to say that i didn't i grew up like fatherless because i did i definitely did have a father but he um wasn't exactly a manly man and obviously this is not his fault and i really appreciate him for all he's done for me um but because i guess he didn't really know any better and he had a pretty crappy childhood to say the least but i guess he didn't know any better and he was basically either uh working and when he was home he would basically be just a giant pushover uh to my mom and um I guess because of that, I sort of witnessed him being walked all over and shouted at and mistreated and talked really b badly about. And I guess my mom at the time when I was growing up basically ruled the house by fear. I was afraid of her. I guess he was afraid of her up until the point. I guess he couldn't take it anymore. But more, of, more often than not, he was basically just being pushed around. And yeah, um, I guess because of that, not having that first of all uh kind of didn't really give me any information on how to act around other people and around other guys especially since um i'm an only child which is i guess the third thing that i wanted to mention but also highly related um well yeah i didn't have any like male role models and he never really sat down and talked to me about how to deal with other people and i guess I don't know, never taught me how to like stand up with my back straight, I guess. Although I guess most parents don't do that. I don't know, probably being too nitpicky. And I'm, yeah, like I wanna re, uh, I guess re-stress that I don't blame him at all or like not, I don't really blame him like 90% because he didn't really know himself. But yeah, there's that, but just being walked all over and stuff, I ended up um, you know, copying a lot of those behaviors when I ended up talking to other people outside the house, including my peers at school. And that is probably what caused me to signal my weakness and end up getting walked all over because I was, yeah, um, yeah, an only child, which is my third point. And while I didn't have like anyone to practice social skills with, and I definitely didn't help with my Asperger's, especially since. My parents would bring me straight home from school every day and never let me hang out because they were kind of helicopter parents, even at a very early age. And um, they didn't really let me learn from my mistakes. So yeah, I guess helicopter parenting would be the fourth thing. And yeah, um, they didn't, they basically didn't make let me make any choices. Um, I was basically just wearing whatever clothes that they picked out for me and most of them were like really like cheap clothes I guess or like if not that then my mom would I guess pick out all my outfits and I guess I didn't really know any better at the time I guess can't really blame them because because of my Asperger's I never really I thought about things like individuality and expressing myself i just did whatever and um well i guess they took that and ran with it and um my mom always made me dress in these really mismatched like outfits which definitely contribute to me being bullied as well i know uh one girl made fun of me in class for having really shitty clothes and yeah that definitely wasn't fun either. And um, yeah, so there's that. Um, what else? Single child. Oh, I'm sorry, I just thought I heard somebody. Um, yeah, being a single child. Um, yeah, not having the chance to practice those social skills. And, um, you know, because I'm thinking with a sibling, like you, you maybe get a sense of dominance hierarchies and, you know, stuff like that. So maybe having a sibling would have helped me even if my dad was a pushover, but I guess the combination of the two and um, not, you know, having that like really strong role, male role model in my life and not even from anybody outside of my family because, well, I guess my parents always kept me in the house, if not in school. So that 
probably didn't help things and yeah I mean yeah there's that so um the fifth thing I guess would be perceived poverty because um it's like I was for all like things considered I was pretty well off as a child but just the fact that my both my parents grew up in poverty uh like they were pretty well off at the time they had me but they were always uh scrimping on things and um never buying me like new clothes and um basically um i'm probably being kind of ungrateful when i say this because you know i realize that now but you know back when you're a kid you don't really understand this you don't understand how things are and you basically grow up comparing yourself to your peers and the people you spend the most time with and the only and i happen to go to this really um exclusive school and the only reason i got in at the time was because my dad um was a physician and you might be thinking wow like you must you must be like bawling then and i guess that is true relative to everybody else but um firstly he wasn't a physician in america so he was he was in a place with a uh, public health care and oftentimes they would underpay doctors although he still did make considerably more than the average person in that country but i guess he was a doctor personal doctor for some big family and they were able to pull some strings and get me into this international school but um I remember just being uh thinking growing up thinking I was poor for most of my life because first of all when I went to my friends houses for a few times they were always so much bigger than mine like these people literally had like um these massive like mansions or even just detached homes like not in apartments which already was a huge thing where I grew up and yeah they'd always had new clothes, nice stuff, and I never really had a lot of that apart from maybe my Game Boy, but they always had that and like 10 times more and were able to like buy pretty much everything they want. Like I basically went to school with the 1%, except I wasn't that, I was more like, I guess, by North American standards, I was middle class, like dead middle class, like not upper or lower, but just middle class. And um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'd say maybe the upper, the upper part of middle class, like, but below upper middle class, I'm not even making any sense, but yeah, I just grew up thinking I was poor and that led to a lot of shame for most of my life and I really didn't understand that because I was probably really ungrateful too and yeah it's like it's hard because I definitely was being ungrateful but also it's like I didn't really know any better as a kid and now I do but um well you don't really know yeah so as a kid so well you just I was all I was constantly ashamed to uh go into my parents like for I guess when I was an early child like there this beat up like Honda like maroon Honda that was like falling apart and eventually we upgraded to like a nicer car but by then it was it was still that was a Hyundai that was beat up and then we got a Honda crv i guess but everybody at that school had like i don't know like bmws mercedes and like crazy ass shit like that so well but that wasn't even what i was paying attention to it was more like the possessions that i had everybody had nicer pencils than me and you know i maybe have gotten comments a few times about it but it's just a massive source of insecurity and I basically experienced like perceived poverty, which is, I realize now that how ridiculous that is, but it definitely shaped my mindset to an extent and made me 
feel a lot more ashamed to deal with my peers, my peers because I felt I was, an inf- I was inferior to them somehow because maybe their parents had all this wealth or they just had this confidence about them. Whereas I always had this insecurity that I was somehow poor, even though I actually wasn't, but I, I believe that genuinely. And yeah, there's so much more to get into that, but that's my fifth point. Um, yeah, well, um, what else? Yeah, um, I guess. Sixth thing would be um, growing up in a collectivist society or culture and then moving to a, um, I guess, more individualistic one, which is where I am now, you know, and um, well, firstly, it's really hard to relate to people here because I feel like everybody's had those like experiences, like going to parties and doing drugs that I've never had. So automatically I'm already like the nerdy kid, the weird kid which I already was, but even more so over here. And um, also that, um, yeah. um, Sorry, I keep pretty paranoid that I'm being listened to by my parents, but uh, what else? Yeah, there's that, and also, um, what was I saying? Um, yeah, just stuff like, oh yeah, like about being collectivist culture, so yeah, that's like, I miss those formative experiences, and, um, I basically... Um, I don't know, like the way people interact with people here is really different. And I guess you're not really taught to stand up for yourself, but you're more taught to fall in line and follow what everybody else is doing, which I guess is kind of true here to an extent, but it's even more pronounced where I was. And, um, yeah, so there's that. And I never was really was encouraged to like participate in class I was always afraid of that and you know stuff like that um that definitely doesn't help with you know functioning in like I guess society over here and over there you're taught to just be like cool or like it's cool not to show emotion and like just be like all aloof but here it just makes you look like an asshole and um like uninteresting uninteresting like here it's really more about being like as outgoing as possible and like like speaking your mind and having opinions and showing emotions but not like needy emotions but more like that you're happy and like being as obnoxious and loud as possible whereas it's really not like that where i'm from or i don't really know anymore whether i'm accurately viewing my past, but I think that's also part of it, just not being in a um, individualistic society when I grew up and then suddenly transitioning and then having to deal with all of the complicated differences and, you know, I guess because of my Asperger's, I wasn't really able to adapt properly, whereas most people weren't, were able to, uh, so yeah, there's definitely that. And um, yeah, um, I think that's pretty much it for now. Video is getting long, so I'm gonna end it here. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, and I know it's been a while um, and I really want to make a promise that I'm gonna be uploading daily and that's probably gonna bite me in the ass, but I feel like it's important for me to make that commitment. So that I hopefully, um, you know, be more productive and it's probably better for my channel too, to upload more frequently. So I guess I will make that promise right now. I promise to upload a, a, a video once a day. And anyways, I hope you enjoy that. And uh, I guess I'm going to finish up for now and upload this soon. And anyways, yeah, um, peace.